Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to paint these really loose colorful trees using watercolors. This is part of my series I am doing um, for my classes that I teach here at a local university. These are the colors on my palette starting from the left we've got uh, quadacridone red, cadmium red, gamboes, cadmium yellow light, sap green, phthalo green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, violet, burnt sienna, and Payne's gray. Now you'll see that my palette has a few other colors on there um, at this portion in it. That's because this was filmed when I was like prepping for the class and trying to figure out what colors I wanted to use for it. But if you have those other colors I mentioned earlier, you'll be just fine. You don't even need all of those colors. You just you pick your color palette based off of what you want your trees to look like. So I'm starting off with my lightest color, which is a yellow. And this tree is going to have kind of a spring fill where they're a little bit uh, a yellowy green. Um, I'm not going to pull any oranges or um, uh, reds into this tree. I want it to feel almost like springtime. So I started with some yellow that I dabbed in kind of a random orientation and pattern. And then I started adding the green. And I'm allowing the green to mix with the yellow. So I'm not letting it dry in between. I want those colors to really mix on the paper. Allowing them to mix on the paper is going to create some more organic and interesting colors that show up. It's also going to really give it this watercolor effect and really lean into using watercolor as a medium. So after I did that kind of spring green color with the sap green, now I mixed some of my darker greens with a little ultramarine blue. And this is to help create the shadows. So I have highlight colors with the yellow. I have midtone colors with the the first green we added and now we have a little bit more of a shadow color and this is starting to form the base of the tree now when you're doing this you want to make sure you're leaving little gaps of white between your um, clumps of leaves that you're painting this is to help make the tree look more realistic when you look at a tree you can see light and the background kind of shining through. So by leaving some of the white of the paper shining through, it's going to help it look more realistic, not as much as a cartoon tree. I then mixed some brown. I did a mix of burnt sienna, violet, and um, I think a little bit of blue. And I just gently blocked in where I wanted the trunk of the tree to be. And I did some of the branches and you can see I added some branches up amongst the leaves of the tree. I'm making sure the trunk of the tree is wider at the bottom and it gets narrower and thinner as the branches work their way up the tree. I blocked in a little bit of grass using some of the other colors I did. I made sure I did more horizontal or left to right strike um, brush strokes for that and I added a little bit of violet to the left side of the grass to kind of indicate a shadow. And then I'm coming in and just tweaking a little bit more on the tree, adding a few random little leaves. So you have kind of individual leaves that you can see and then you got more of the clumps of leaves. And then I've got my ultramarine blue and I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to the left side of the trunk and kind of reinforcing the, the sh cast shadow that I was doing on the tree. The nice thing with this technique is it doesn't have to be exact. We are not going for realism. We're just having fun making trees. And a lot of the techniques I'm using this can be also used when making bushes or other kinds of plants. So now let's do a more autumn or aut autumnal themed tree. So I'm starting with a more orangey based yellow than what I started with last time. And I'm going to have my tree have a little bit different of a shape. Um, this one's going to be a little bit wider. And so I'm just kind of blocking in the shape. I'm again keeping gaps where the white of the paper is showing through. 
this will help one help make the layering of other colors more interesting and make sure there's some light peeking through behind the branches of the tree so that it looks more realistic. Now I'm mixing up some more orange tone colors with my gambosed and my uh, cadmium red. And I mixed in a little bit of my burnt sienna mix that I used on the previous trunk. Um, just to dull it down just a smidge. And you can see the paint flowing in those wet areas. When you put watercolor onto wet paper, the paints really flow. Um, if you put watercolor on dry paper, the paint is going to stay wherever you put it. So I am doing kind of a very specific wet into wet wash on this paper right now where I am really using the wet into wet techniques, but I'm using it in very specific areas of the paper. So instead of making the whole paper wet, I'm just having the, where the leaves are on the tree be wet and I'm doing um, wet into wet washes by adding other colors into it. Now my inspiration for this tree is I really wanted to play into the colors that I saw on a tree in my neighborhood where at the beginning of autumn half the tree was yellow and then you could see a little bit of red in there and then the rest of it was green like it was just half of the tree had decided it was autumn and the other half was still leaning on to spring and so I really wanted to do that multicolored effect for this picture so I did the yellows and the oranges and then I also did some greens and I had the greens kind of stay more on the left side specifically towards the bottom and now I'm just coming in and adding individual leaves just to help round this out and make it a little bit more dimensional one thing when you are painting trees you want to make sure you are keeping your brush strokes very random and not too similar because if your brush strokes or your dabs are all the same, it's not going to look realistic. So twirl that paintbrush around, change how you're holding it. Um, you can hold up further back or closer to the, the tip of the paintbrush. You can um, hold your hand orientation. Whatever you need to do to make your brush strokes get a little bit more random and varied in size, um, I really suggest doing that. Now I'm working on the trunk and I'm just using some more of that brown mix that we used earlier. And I'm just making sure my tree is shaped just a little bit different. When you're painting trees, remember it is always easier to make a branch wider, but it's very, very hard to make it thinner than what, what you already painted. And so start with really thin um, brush strokes and you can always widen them out. So I decided when I was doing this demo that I wanted to vary up the land or the ground underneath the trees. And so this one I decided to make it a little bit more rocky, um, maybe some dirt showing through. And so I didn't go smooth left to right brush strokes with it. I decided to um, do a little bit more varied bumps and shapes underneath and do some different colors than just green because I wanted it to look like this tree was growing amongst a bunch of rocks and maybe some of the grass had started to die because it was the end of fall just kind of change things up a little bit so I left some white sparkle showing through just to help create visual interest this is um, when you don't fill in a whole area with color, you leave some of the white of the paper showing through. And I added greens and reds and browns to the base of this tree. I did decide it was a little too dark, so I grabbed my rag and I just absorbed just some of that color up to help lighten it up. And then I'm just implying some shadows um, by adding in some darker colors as well. This is not a perfect picture by any means. This is just a fun activity to do with watercolor. And it can really help you practice kind of a more loose style of painting. At least for me, I tend to be really tight when I paint. I want to make things really realistic. And I really struggle with just loosening up and 
letting the paint take control of the picture. And so doing pictures like this where I'm leaning into watercolor and its effects really helps me improve my watercolor skills. I added a few shadows into the tree, um, uh, sp specifically on the left hand side with some darker greens. This is just going to help create more dimension and shadow. Um, the tree on the, the first one we did looks a little bit flat to me because it it's not as contrasting with some of the shadows. So if I went back and did that one again, I would probably add a, a little bit darker of colors just to help give it a little bit of dimension. So this next tree I, I did is a little bit different. I, instead of starting with a yellow tone, I started with some blues. And then I followed the same process. Um, this tree is going to be more similarly shaped to the first one we did, but it's going to be a little bit longer and the branches and, and things and the color values colors and values used in it are going to be a little bit different. And this is what I love about these kinds of techniques and practicing them is really trying out different things and experimenting. I have whole sketchbooks of just playing around with my paints to see what they can do. So I have kind of a grayish green color um, at, that I did with the blues and now I mixed a more yellowy green with the sap green and some yellows and just a tiny touch of our thalo blue and I am just dabbing that in. Now I'm picking up some ultramarine blue. Mix that with just a little bit of the burnt sienna and a little bit of thalo blue or thalo green and now we have kind of this dark foresty green that I'm using to help create the shadows amongst the trees. Now one thing I would really recommend to you as you are learning to paint trees or um, bushes or anything like that is to look at a reference photo. You may not be trying to get ultra realism in your picture. You may be trying to go so for something more like this. But a reference photo is still very, very helpful because it will help you see the highlights, the shadows, the shape, how the leaves are formed or how they clump together, all of those types of things. So even if you're not painting something exactly like your reference photo, it can give you an idea of how um, the light interacts with the shape of the tree and how that individual tree's leaves grow and how they are formed and even kind of what colors are on it. Um, I use this technique all the I use reference photos all the time, even if I'm not making something more realistic. So now I'm just working on the branches and the trunk of the tree. For this tree, I made it a more gray toned tree. So it doesn't have as many warm browns in the trunk and the branches. I am making it more a gray brown color. And again, I'm just slowly building up the thickness of the trunk because it's a lot easier to make it wider than it is to try and erase or clean up something that has gone too wide. I'm also making sure my branches on this tree are very uh, different from each other, so it's not too similar. And I did more work on the branches on this tree than on some of the other ones. And you can see there's a few little branches up towards the top of the tree as well. Now for the grass on this one, I did some more green grass like we did in the first example, but this one I had little individual um, blades of grass showing through. I had the grass kind of form more up into a point to the base of the tree just to kind of help imply, you know, like this tree had a little bit of a hill behind it, just to give it some more dimension and interest. I added a little bit of shadow to the grass on the left side again to imply a shadow from the tree and add a few more branches and shadows on on the leaves. And this is something you can continue to mess around with and tweak as you go along. But I really wanted to um, just do these last few tweaks. Now I'm coming in with a yellow tone because I wanted to have the the tree looked like it was getting some sunlight shining on it. 
So I add a little bit of the yellow, just hitting the tops of a few of the clumps of leaves. Nothing too crazy. And I just had little tiny dabs, like they were more like individual leaves than a whole section of the tree. But here is the finished piece. And remember, you can do these techniques with whatever colors you want. So you can do more autumn themed ones where you have a lot of reds and oranges and yellows and, and just tiny bits of green within your picture. Um, so have fun with this, try it out. And I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I create, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and leave any comments you might have down below and I will do my best to answer them. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.